So we have the sum product decoder. And now we, now we need to simplify the sum product decoder. Why do we need to simplify the sum product decoder? Because of the following reason. This hyperbolic tangent operation and the product is very nasty if you want to implement it, both in hardware but also in software. So the hyperbolic tangent function is a pretty nice function. So it is the output is contained between plus one and minus one. Somehow it looks like this. Let me use a different color. But its inverse function um, now looks uh, like this. So it goes from minus infinity and goes quickly to plus infinity. So the inverse function can be quite nasty. And then on top of that, you have a product. And the product essentially is also difficult to implement, in particular in hardware. You prefer to have additions. How do we get additions from a product? We go to the logarithmic domain. In order to do this, we first do the following. We take apart our messages and write them as a sign and a magnitude representation. So we say that the messages are alpha ij times beta ij, where alpha is the sign and beta is the magnitude. Now, why do we do this? Because the hyperbolic tangent is an odd function, and an odd function has the property that you can take the sign out of the argument. So if you have an odd function, odd function, you have the property that f of minus x is equal to minus f of x. And then that's what we can use. So recall that the uh, message update is tangent hyperbolic. So this, we can uh, put this two times inverse hyperbolic tangent on the left hand side of the equation. So our output message tangent hyperbolic divided by two is the product of the signs of the incoming messages times the product of the hyperbolic tangents of the magnitudes. Okay, so then um, let's see how we can further simplify the expression. So we start with the check note outgoing message. It's the product over the signs times two times inverse hyperbolic tangent times the product of the hyperbolic tangents of the magnitudes divided by two. Now we want to get rid of this product. How do we do this? We add a logarithm, but we cannot just add a logarithm. We need to undo the logarithm as well. So we need to add the log, but at the same time, we need to add an exponential. That's the same thing. So now we have a log of a product that becomes the sum of log of hyperbolic tangents. And we have two times the inverse hyperbolic tangent times the exponential. Slightly rewrite this instead of log of hyperbolic tangent. This is minus the log of the hyperbolic cotangent. That's the same. So hyperbolic cotangent is um, the hyperbolic tangent power minus one. And we, because of the logarithm, this power minus one gets a negative sign in front. So that's minus log of hyperbolic cotangent. So we can define this. Um, function log of hyperbolic cotangent of tau divided by two as the function phi of tau. So this function phi of tau is log of hyperbolic cotangent of tau divided by two. And this is minus the log of hyperbolic tangent of tau divided by two. This is log of e to power tau plus one divided by e to power tau minus one. So now we can calculate the inverse function of this function. And that's um, two times hyperbolic tangent power minus one of e to the power minus tau. Hmm. That sounds familiar. So that sounds familiar. And that's because that's what we had here. So here we have the inverse of this phi function. And um, 
let's see if we can further simplify the inverse of this pi function. So simplifying this, so we insert the definition of the hyperbolic tangent power minus one. This is log of one e to power minus tau, one plus e to power one minus e to power minus tau. So hyperbolic tangent minus one is log of one plus x divided by one minus x. The argument is e to power minus tau. So put this into the argument. And then we get log of e to the power tau plus one divided by e to the power tau minus one. If we compare this, it's exactly the same. So we have a function that is self inverse. So phi minus one of tau is equal to phi of tau. Very nice. So with this, we can say that if we go back, this is actually equal to phi of beta i prime j and this is equal this is also equal of pi so we have pi of the sum of pi functions so it means we can write this as the product over the signs and that is simple that's just the product of a plus minus one and we saw because of bipolar representation and the isomorphism with the other representations this is equal to their, um, this is equal to an exclusive or operation. So we have the product over the signs times the phi function of the sum of phi functions. And the phi functions are applied to the um, magnitude of the log likelihood ratio. So that's the simplified expression in the log domain, we got rid of the product. We have this product left, but that's just a product of a plus minus one. That's just exclusive or, so we can ignore that one. Okay, so we have this um, phi function, and we know that the phi function is self-inverse. So the first advantage is that we can um, replace the product by a sum, perfect, and instead of having two functions, hyperbolic tangent, inverse hyperbolic tangent that we need to implement, we just have one function. And we can approximate this function, for instance, using a lookup table. Okay, how does this function look like, and how um, can we um, simplify this? Okay, first, um, um, this is what I said already. This product of the signs can be implemented as um, modulo 2 sum of the um, binary values by simple XOR. Um, we can also simplify the summation and reduce the number of summons in the second part. Note that for every check node, we have DC outgoing messages. And for every outgoing message, we need to take a sum over DC minus one values. If you look at the value here, we have DC minus one summons, and we need to do this summation for all of the outgoing edges of a check node. So what we can do is, uh, instead, we can calculate AIJ, which is the sum over all possible um, Pi functions, pi function of all the magnitudes going into the check node, we sum them up, and instead of taking the sum over all but one, we take the sum over all, and then we subtract the one that is missing. So with this, we can say that this is L from ij, is the product of the signs times phi of aij that we pre-computed minus the incoming message that we consider. So minus phi of absolute value of the income message. So instead of DC times DC minus one summons, we only have two times DC terms in the summations. And this is also the way that we implement this in our MATLAB file. So here you can take a look at simulate LDPC. And this is also what we're going to look at in the discussion session. So how does this phi of t look like? Phi of t looks as follows. So it's a function that looks like this. 
So, and we can see that it is self inverse because it's mirrored around this 45 degree line. Mirrored in the two directions, and that's why it's self inverse function. Now we see the following. So, now let's assume that we have phi of x1 plus phi of x2 plus phi of x3. And assume that this is x1, this is x2, and this is x3. So we see that x1 is smallest, the function is decreasing, so f of x1 has the largest value. f of x1 has the largest value. f of x2, or the phi of x2, has a small value. phi of x3 has a very small value. So this is approximately equal to phi of x1. It's approximately equal to phi of the minimum of the xi's that are at the input. So we can say that the sum over phi of xi can be approximated by phi of the minimum value of the xi's. That's one way to simplify further. One very nice approximation. And that's the approximation that we're going to see next. So, what we have is the following. So, this pi function, uh, we want to get rid of it. Because, again, it's a function that we need to implement. And um, we want to have a very low complexity decoder. This may even be too much to implement. So what, what we have is we have the phi, the sum of phi functions, and as I just showed on the previous slide, this can be approximated by phi of the minimum of the input. So this is phi of the minimum of the incoming log likelihood ratios, and we have phi of phi. We know that phi is self-inverse, so phi of phi is equal to 1. This is phi of phi of x. This is the same as phi power minus 1 of phi of x. It is equal to x. So this is equal to the minimum of the incoming messages. So what we can do is we can approximate this check note update equation as the product of the signs, exclusive or, times the minimum of the absolute values that are coming into the equation. And the absolute values, um, we take just the minimum over the ones that we exclude. So this is the uh, simplification. And now we got rid of any special function. The only thing we need to do is we need to take the product of our signs, which is simple, times the minimum of incoming messages and calculating a minimum is also some very simple operation. So this is what we call a min-sum decoder. This is a min-sum decoder because we have replaced the product operation. Before we had the sum product decoder, we replaced the product operation by the minimum operation. And now we call it min-sum decoder. Why min-sum and not sum-min? Because sum-min it does not, it's not as easy to pronounce and say as min sum. That's, that's the only reason why these terms are switched. So, um, of course, because of this simplification, we make some mistakes. And uh, because in order to overcome this uh, performance degradation, uh, we can do some correction, essentially. Uh, one very popular correction is the so-called normalized min-sum decoder. Essentially, what you do is you take this correction, or you take this expression, and you multiply it with a correction term, or a constant alpha. Very often, you choose alphas. The multiplication is very simple to implement, 3 over 4 or 7 over 8. Why is 3 over 4? simple to implement. Well, uh, 3 over 4 times x is 
one half times x plus uh, one over four times x. Multiplication with one half in uh, digital circle is simple because you just shift by two position and you cut off the two least significant bits. So by one position, you cut off the least significant bit. Multiplication with one over four, you shift by two positions and you cut off the two least significant bits. And then you just add the two and you're done. So let's take a look at an example. So here's an example. It's the same example as we had before, the same codes. And now we use this sum product decoder. That's the solid curves. And we use this scaled min sum decoder with alpha equals 3 over 4. And we see that there is a small performance degradation. This performance degradation is almost negligible. So instead of implementing this phi function, so when using the phi function, we don't change anything. But the decoder is still equivalent, mathematically fully equivalent. And now if we make this change with the scale mean sum decoder, we see a performance penalty of 0 0.05 dB. So for most applications, this can be tolerated quite, quite well. So that's one way of simplifying the decoder and one very popular way of simplifying the decoder. Here's another example um, that shows the performance of LDPC codes on the binary symmetric channel. Very same decoder, very same code. We just change the channel. And now we see that uh, we have a performance on the binary symmetric channel. And here, interestingly, the, uh, the ordering of the code is different. So before, the pink violet curve was better on the um, binary input AWGN channel. So the one with Fermat degree 3, check not degree 15. If we move to the binary symmetric channel, the situation changes and suddenly the code with different parameter can tolerate higher error probabilities on the binary symmetric channel. So um, this means that the performance depends on the parameter, but also on the channel. So um, it's not directly obvious which code is better, but it also depends on the channel. But you see the beauty, I take the same decoder, just different channel, different calculation of log likelihood ratios, and we are done. Okay, so this um, is also the end of this um, video. Next, we're going to see how we can simplify the message passing decoder on the binary erasure channel.